Welcome to MCOM Solutions. My name is Jake, and today we're going to be talking about the privacy settings that you may want to consider when you're setting up your new LoRa Meshtastic radio, like this Lego Tieco or whatever it is you have. Most people, when they get into this, or they do so because they're interested in or believe in, you know, be able to communicate and converse with other people and remain private if they so choose, right? They value their privacy. So if you don't do some basic settings, then you might expose your information to people that you don't want to have your information, like your location. So the three areas we're primarily going to talk about is <clears throat> the Bluetooth settings, um, your location settings or uh, position settings as it's listed in the uh, radio configuration menu and uh, your channel selection. So, and how you set up your channels. Uh, there is one other way you can kind of remain more anonymous and that's through some of your role settings. We'll talk that just briefly, but we're going to focus on those first three. So all the information I'm presenting to you is going to be from meshtastic.org. Obviously you see here, we're over on the website. Obviously some of this is stuff I'm, because I've been using it for a while, I have experience with, but I just wanted to show you this because it can be helpful. And I understand, especially if you're new uh, to Meshtastic, it can be overwhelming and a little confusing at first. So hopefully this can help some of you out. So as I mentioned, Bluetooth settings, that's uh, your configuration value. So Bluetooth enabled, uh, it should be in the default. And then the Meshtastic firmware should be able to recognize whether or not your device has a screen. And if it has a screen, it's going to go to what's called random pin. As you see here, it says random pin or fixed pin or no pin. I'm really going to just say no pin. I wouldn't recommend um, unless you're maybe in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> There's nobody within miles, but um, then who are you talking to? I don't know. A anyways, <clears throat> so the random, as it says here, attached screen. It, I'm going to say that that is maybe not 100% because when I was recently uh, trying to connect to a new WizBlock, I was using the default fixed pin. And the fixed pin, as you see here, is one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six digit pin. Obviously, you can change that once you get logged in. And even Mestastic says, hey, we strongly recommend you don't leave that in the default and just leave that there. So um, it wasn't letting me connect using that fixed pin. Uh, and then when I connected the device via serial to my laptop, it was set to random pin. So if that's the case, don't fear. If you can't get connected to a new device, just go the serial route, use a USB cable, uh, connect to your computer and use the, uh, <clears throat> I'll leave a link for the client page you go to to connect to your device. And there's other videos on that. So if you have questions, just ask. Um, so yes. Random pin is what I'm going to, I would recommend using that way. If you don't understand random pin, the way it is, is you're trying to pair with this to this device with your phone or tablet or whatever in a, uh, basically a Bluetooth enabled smart device. You can connect to this and it's going to pop up on there, uh, on this screen, what the random pin is. You're going to enter that into your device and now it'll be paired. Every time you try to connect to a new device that it doesn't recognize, it's going to generate a new random pin. Is that 100% secure? No, if someone has your device and your phone is no longer connected to it, um, then they could obviously look at the screen and now pair to it and look at the history and the thing and look at locations and stuff. So those are just things to consider. You could use fixed pin and change that. Uh, and that way it would be hard if someone got a hold of your device be able to figure out how to pair to it. They could go serial route though. So really once your device is compromised, you're kind of, <laughs> you're kind of screwed if no, someone knows what they're looking for. So next thing we're gonna talk about is position settings, right? So <clears throat> you can enable the position and, um, or disable the position if you want to. Uh, the biggest thing you're gonna do, I think for some people, especially if they want to still, use say like the default channel and to be able to reach out to <clears throat> uh, 
uh, you know, other people in their area, they could use the fixed position feature and then just adjust the location in there because it allows you, once you enable that, to, you know, a city park near, you know, a mile from your house or whatever, something, some um, point that uh, is not specific to you, uh, but still lets people know, hey, this guy or person is in my town and uh, or city, whatever. Uh, and, you know, that might want to start trying to like talk to you. So, cause if somebody else is using this, maybe you guys, uh, you know, are like-minded in some shape or form. So, Hey, build communities, right? Um, so you can go in and just intervals, times, attempts, fixed position. As I mentioned, that's a cool way to do it. Smart broadcasting. I know there's some, uh, confusion over there. I've heard confusion over that over the years. Really, that's what it just, it just increases uh the interval once there's been a change in the device and then you can go in there and you know the default is 100 meters you can go in there and adjust that to 10 meters or 500 meters or whatever you choose and then you can change the interval time and broadcast intervals flag position we're not going to talk that <clears throat> so channels uh this is where I, I know it probably surprises some people when they first get one and they're not very familiar with it. And, they, and they're in an area that's used, uh, has a lot of metastatic users in it. And they fire that thing up and get it set up and have it on their phone. And all of a sudden they start seeing all these people <clears throat> pop up in their um, the little two-person thing. You know, and, and then maybe someone starts direct messaging them or something and they're like, what the hell, or someone hit uh, request a location from them, um, it could probably freak them out a little bit. And so if you go in and you leave the default channel settings in there, it's going to, um, that primary channel, right, which is used as the default channel, is uh, everyone has that. So you have the QR code, and I'll throw some screenshots in here, uh, of the default channel, but it has a QR code and a URL. Uh, you can share either or with someone and then they can basically join your channel if you've created a unique one. Uh, but everyone has, if they have Mestastic installed, has that default channel. Um, <clears throat> so that's a way to connect with other people. Uh, I've configured some of my devices to be where I have a uh, you know, the default channel is a secondary, uh, and then my primary is my private channel. So if you're looking to maybe be able to talk, talk to other people outside your private group, then that might be something you consider. Or you have a device uh, that you keep on the public channel, basically, and, um, you know, connected to an old cell phone or tablet or something. And that's the one you kind of use. Uh, to converse with other people that are outside your initial group or your trusted group of people and boom, you're set up. So uh, the biggest thing though, the next thing we'll talk is like when we talk about is the encryption, right? You're gonna get that when you create your private channels and you can adjust that from basically the uh, AES 128 or uh, the 32 bytes of the AES 256. Um, and you can change that key. Uh, and if you're really concerned about privacy, you know, once you've created a private channel, you might change that key on some certain intervals, like where, and then you have to send updates to um, your, your, your group, the people you're talking to. Um, and then we'll jump down, we'll talk position, uh, precision, which is a cool feature added to the channels where you're setting up your channels. You can go to, um, what is it, low, did not show it on here. I think the way it's listed on, let me look on the app. Sometimes what, how it's listed on here is not how, um, yeah, it's low precision, medium precision, position, precision. Wow, Jake. Um, and high precision uh, or disabled, right? And it's by default, it's disabled. Um, but if you go to, um, high, high precision. I assume that's neighborhood level precision around plus or minus 350 meters. Uh, city size is your medium plus or minus three kilometers. 
And then large would be, be a large region plus or minus 11 kilometers. So that's a cool feature. Uh, so those are things you should consider. And then we'll go into roles real quick. All right, so device configuration under roles. I'm only really gonna talk one here. The repeater, uh, the nice thing about the repeater is it doesn't show up on the node list. So uh, it can be in a position you don't really have to worry about. So if you've got your fixed solar node somewhere, up a high point says repeater, uh, you know, you don't have to, you know, really worry about that. Most of the time, the ones I've built, a lot of times I don't even put a GPS because I usually use the rack with blocks. I don't even use a GPS module in them because it, it doesn't need it. I don't need it. Um, it's there as a repeater. So that will keep that one kind of uh, anonymous so that it's doing its job and no one really knows where it's at. So um, last thing I'll talk is in conclusion, right, is the biggest thing that will most likely be compromised in your network is your cell phone uh, or whatever smart device you're using. Uh, it's connected to all kinds of different things. You know, a lot of times people walk around with their Bluetooth on uh, because exactly for one reason, they might be connected to this device or whatever. Um, and there's just vulnerabilities about your cell phone. So if you're really concerned about that, maybe you use a T-Deck or something like that that's not connected to a phone uh, as your primary use if you're in that situation. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, put them down below. You can also join our Telegram group that you know has over 400 members from people from all over the world, pretty active group, uh, and a lot of questions and answers over there. People sharing projects, good stuff. Check out our other social media links down below, our website, and affiliate links for Rack and Rockland. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos.